Now I'd like you to take you to another place. This is Library Thing. The Library Thing is a social site where people who read books log in, they talk about them, they tag them, they post them, they write reviews about them. So this contains a lot of social metadata. Here is the same book, uh, The Demon Haunted World in Library Thing. And we can see if we look down just a little bit, um, we have almost 3,000 members tagging this book or talking about it, catalog cataloging it. 43 reviews. Um, we have uh, review ratings. Uh, we can read those reviews if we want to. We also see these tags, the tags that I was talking about earlier. Uh, these are the um, uh, different kind of subjects that the people who have read the book uh, think that it covers. And you can see there's quite a number of different kinds of terms, a much wider variety of terms than we saw in the Library of Congress subject classification. So we can see that, for example, atheism, critical thinking, culture, you'll notice that some of these are larger, some of these are smaller. Uh, the larger letters indicate more people have, have used that tag than other tags. But we see that we can see a variety of different kinds of subject classifications here. And that starts to become useful for browse, because when we click on one of these terms, say critical thinking, now we can find out other books that people have tagged critical thinking. And we get quite a large list. Now, the problem that libraries have had traditionally is that libraries don't have enough people tagging things individually to make this kind of system work. So if an individual library, if only two or three people tagged this particular book, those tags might not be useful. But what we see when we look at library thing and we look at this tag cloud that was generated is that now we have almost 3,000 members who have done this and we start to get this interesting pattern. Uh, so we might be interested in astronomy or we might be interested in philosophy of science. Not too many of people have tagged that. Or we might be interested in one of these um, uh, other uh, more frequently tagged terms. But the point is, is that we have 3,000, nearly 3,000 people doing this. So the question is, how can libraries then leverage this critical mass? How can they get enough people to tag things uh, so that they can get useful results like this? Well, if we take a look at the Danbury Library, uh, Danbury, Connecticut, I believe, and look at the same book there, this is a local library, small library. They would not have enough people going to the library to tag all of the books in the library. Uh, with useful terms in sufficient quantities to make it interesting. So what they've done is they've partnered with Library Thing. And if you look down here, they have similar books and they also have tags. Now this tag cloud actually comes from Library Thing. So this small library now is leveraging the critical mass that the, 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 the Library Thing um, user base has and they're applying it to their books. Now what happens when you click on a book here is that this is now tied back to their local resources so that when you click on one of these tags, even though the tag cloud is coming from library thing, the books are coming from the local library. So when you click on one of these books, you return to the Danbury Library and you can see the similar books that they have that go along with those. So that's one of the ways that libraries are, are using uh, this social metadata uh, to enhance browse, to enhance search, and leveraging the critical mass. And I think you can see that um, uh, whereas a lot of times people used to go to places like Amazon to do research on books, even though librarians didn't like that too much, there's a lot of useful information here. Uh, so if you go to the Amazon listing for this book, you can see that there are customer reviews. Uh, you can see that there are ratings. You can see other books that people bought that are similar. You can see some of the traditional details. You can see citations, books that uh, um, cite this particular book or other works that this book cites. What do other customers ultimately buy? So there's a, a variety of social metadata here. And libraries are beginning to take note of this. If you take a look at OCLC, WorldCat, which is the um, nonprofit association of libraries, they produce a master catalog record now you can get out on the web that does a mashup. That is, they combine all this data uh, from, other, from other sources. So when we look now at the WorldCat record for this particular book, uh, we see that it's got ratings. We see that it has subject classifications. We see that it gives you lists of libraries where you can find it. We see that it gives you sources where you can buy it. We see that it gives the traditional bibliographic information that you might find in a library record or in the Library of Congress. 
you see that it's linked to reviews from several different sources. We read Goodreads, Amazon reviews. These are all uh, social social sites like uh, uh, the library thing that I just uh, demonstrated a, a minute or two ago. Kind of an expanded subject list. Um, user lists, different uh, lists users have created that this book is on, and other books that people have bought. So food for thought, think about social metadata, think about using it, think about using it in your formal search, and also think about using it for browse. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Bruce Fulton, and have a good one.